Welcome. Welcome. Oh, we have an exciting episode today, this don't is, we, Jack? We do. This is a great episode. This is a great episode. It hasn't episode. even happened yet. It hasn't even happened yet. But it's gonna happen right now. <laughs> do you wanna do you wanna give the hint of why it's such a great episode? No. Oh, okay. Do you? <laughs> I do. I would love to. I, we have a very dear friend of ours. Yes. And friend of the pod. Yes. With us today. Yes, we do. So I'd like to give a little introduction. Yes. To them, if I may. Sure. <clears throat> <laughs> this is a fellow therapist, Aries, yogi, and vegetarian. Yes. This charming, sweet, kind, and precious young woman That's who embodies nice. actually very few of these traits <laughs> is not only a dear friend, like I said, of the pod, but of us. Mm-hmm. Hashtag Jackie and Carl approved. Yes. She studied at an undisclosed university and currently practices in an undisclosed town. In an undisclosed state as a therapist. (laughs) Correct. Some of her favorite movies are Talladega Nights, Dude, Where's My Car, and Finding Nemo. That is very on brand for this person. She is a professional at always having plans when we want to meet her for dinner. Correct. But she is cherished nonetheless. Yes. Her AIM screen name was Claire DeBear 10. (laughs) It's Claire. It's Claire. Well. That That was your fake intro. I have a real intro. And all of that was from your... Facebook. I, I could tell. Yeah, I haven't I heard creeped, some of that in a while. I creeped your Facebook. Here's your, here's Claire's real introduction. She she wrote one for herself, which isn't as exciting. But Claire <laughs> is a licensed mental health counselor and a registered yoga mm-hmm. teacher with a background in community mental health, hospice bereavement, college counseling, and currently works in a private practice. She is passionate about meeting clients where they are to address life and relationship stressors, trauma, grief, mood, anxiety, and co-occurring disorders she utilizes acceptance and commitment therapy hey mindfulness and somatic based techniques and has additional training in integrative and complementary medicine to support clients as holistic wellness and build a rich and meaningful life oh wow that's very that was really good that we have provided nothing like that on this absolutely not (laughs) (laughs) well on that note wow claire claire Hi guys. We're so happy that you are our first. Yes. No pressure. Yes. Number one. No pressure. A lot of people will hate you. Yes. Um we have, have a lot of people. That. Yeah. For sure. But I think uh, I think this is um this is how it needed to be. Yes. Okay. I, agree. I agree. So you know we start out with what's tired. So Claire, lead us in. What's tired? What's got you tired this week? Also no pressure. <laughs> well, <laughs> Something I have been thinking about is a show that I recommended to the both of you that I don't think you've started yet. What? Which one? The Patient. Oh, no. I've not seen it yet. Oh, is that the one with Steve Carell? Yeah. Yeah. I did watch it. You did? I couldn't get into it. What? I watched two episodes. Don't spoil. No no spoilers. I won't won't spoil it. Do I need to like try it again? Um, I don't know, but here's why I'm getting into why I'm tired. So oh, okay. I'm tired that I have to wait an entire week to watch oh, an episode of something. Right. I don't know if you guys have said that before on here no, or not. No, no we have not. That's uh, a good one, though. That's not been one. But I'm over Hulu telling me that mm-hmm. I have to wait a week to watch a show that's 20 minutes long. So after this most recent episode, I'm very tired of that. Yeah. What is this, 1997? What yeah. are you doing? Agreed. What are we doing? Agreed. Wow. Right. I feel like I'm running back to the couch to like make sure I don't miss two seconds of it because I can't watch it again if I don't <laughs> Those want to. Those were the days. Those were the yeah. days. So I'm pretty tired of that at the moment. Wow. I know. Okay. I know. Pretty basic. Jackie. Oh. Is it nature? Got a nature <laughs> tired first this Ever this since time? you read me a few episodes ago, <laughs> I don't want to talk about nature. Actually, I don't have a nature one. I So I am very tired of construction in our undisclosed oh. location in our undisclosed state, um, mm-hmm. especially on the major um, highway that mm-hmm. um, surrounds our undisclosed location. I'm really tired of it. I mean, I would just... Oof. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a, a mess. big oof. Yeah, it's a it's big a mess. mess. And it's not going to be fixed for like years. Yeah. Literally years. And then when that's done, they'll pick another road. Right. They'll to fix... <laughs> completely move. Right. Two inches to the right. Yes. Yeah. It is. I'm not a big fan of it right now. Mm-hmm. And I haven't been, but it's just making me tired. I don't know why, yeah. but it is. It's, it's grinding my gears this grinding week. Grinding gears. What about you, grinding Kyle? Gears. We got to know. Well, you know, you you war with nature. Yes. And I have this thing about flags. Yeah. Oh, here so we So I go. would like to continue my war on flags. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but this time... People who put flags on their trucks, mm. like, you know, uh-huh. like, and I'm not talking like a little, like a decal. I mean, like pole mm-hmm. flag, like, yeah. full flag, yeah. full flag. 
Any flags in particular of well, their messaging? Or no. we, well, we'll leave it <laughs> now out. Now you know. Now you know me, Jackie. I don't <laughs> like to put people in boxes, and I don't like to generalize. However, uh, the Confederate flag. Mm-hmm. Boo. Which, can I just say, even though we're in an undisclosed state, it's not a Confederate state. No, it's not. Absolutely Nor not. was it ever. No. Um, Although there are people who think that this state was part of the... And it wasn't. It wasn't. It no, was not part of it the It sure South, wasn't. Which is really sad, because... You clearly did not pay attention in history class. And it it sure feels like the South sometimes. Mm -hmm, Sure. um, So, so, so those, a couple American flags, a couple Trump flags, as you can imagine. But it's like Trump 2020 flags, which is like. Move on. Move on. Move on, sis. Move on, sis. Uh, Or 20, was it 2020? Yeah, Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. It's 2022, right? Yes. That's Mm -hmm. time. We know time. Mm Mm-hmm. We're, I don't know. We're time. oriented. I don't know. Time. Yeah, but we got to stop. We got to stop with the flags. Yes. We got to yeah, stop. I it. agree with that. All around. Mm-hmm. All around flags. So, Claire, we want to start with. <laughs> Claire looks very terrified. You got, no one can see her except very, for Kyle and I, but right. she is a little bit nervous. Very nervous. We did maybe twist her arm to be the first. Right. Um, I happen. got voluntold. Yeah. That's true. We said, look, we're recording on this day. Can you be there? And she said, actually, yes. Great. Perfect. Here she is. <laughs> So we want to know, how did we meet Claire, right? I mean, we kind of talked about, Jackie, how you and I met, Mm -hmm. but how did we, how did we meet Claire? Why don't you go first? Because you've known her longer. Yes, I have. So how did you meet Claire and what were your first impressions (laughs) of Claire? I don't know if Claire's going to want me to tell this story, but um, I met, I met Claire at, well, actually I met Claire twice, but didn't realize I met her the first time until much later. Mm -hmm. So I'll say when I feel like I really met her. So when she came in for her interview um, to work at a place that we will not discuss and Mm -hmm. she was going to come work on my team. And so we had to interview her while Claire was a little bit jacked up, I believe on coffee, coffee, coffee. I always say Mountain Dew. It wasn't Mountain Dew, but like, you know, like from Chaladega and I said, I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew. Like that's what it felt like. Yes. It kind of did feel like that. So Claire shows up to this interview and it's, it was it was not just me. It was like our whole team at the time, which I think was maybe like three or four people. It was not that many people. Mm-hmm. I think it was maybe there's maybe like four of us at most, and it was mm-hmm. a, like, yeah. it was a group interview. Mm-hmm. And Claire was like bouncing out of her chair. It was <laughs> hilarious. I'm sitting there like we're talking, and she's just like like she was so like jazzed about it. And I was like, I gotta have her. She knew that. Gotta job. have her. She I was like, yes. Job. I was like, gotta have her. Like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's she's it. She's like we gotta have her. She is the moment. Yes, and mm-hmm. so uh, that's how we met, and she got hired, and she worked. I don't want to say for me because it really wasn't for me, mm-hmm. but worked on my team for a while, <laughs> um, and then I and then I realized later that we actually met in when we both were in orientation, <laughs> and I didn't realize she came up and said hello to me. <laughs> And, like, and I was like, well, and I was brand new <laughs> and like in orientation, we had to say, you know, where we were working. Well, the department that I was, that, that Claire ended up on too was brand new. It hadn't even started mm-hmm. yet. So I, I mean, and I think at the time you were working in a different department you were mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm from, and I'm like, oh, okay, hello. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm just right. nervous. You shut me down. I was wow. like, oh, <laughs> was for sure. Freak. I was so nervous. <laughs> well, I had been working in the prison for like almost five years. So oh, I like, so it was a, people it, talking to me was a, a foreign concept. Shift. Yes. Yeah. I was like, oh, you're, oh, you're really nice. Okay. I just wanted to be friendly. Yes. Yeah. 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 It was, yeah. it was fine. That's how, but that's how I met Claire. That's but pretty accurate. I, yes. I mean, you're, you're here to correct us, so. No. <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, I, I get a turn. I get a turn to rebuttal? Yeah, oh, yes, sure. you do. Yeah, yes, oh. please. Re- so, oh, what, no. so is that, you can tell us, is that accurate? And then what were your impressions oh, no. in that moment? Very accurate. Oh, you good. know, definitely okay. the first good. part of meeting you at an orientation and hearing <laughs> what you were doing Yeah. at my new job, my future new job. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to know, just wanted yeah. to learn and this is my job. Yeah. And then conversation <laughs> over. I was like, yes. okay, going to go talk to my friends <laughs> that I know. Do you want to meet anybody? Nope. No, oh, cool. Done. Cool. Bye. <laughs> yeah. And then you walked through the door when I was getting interviewed and yes. I was like, you look familiar. I'm like, do I know you? Yes. And it took, we didn't figure it out. We didn't figure it out for a hot minute. I was it was, like, we had been working together yeah. for like a month or two yeah. before we were like, I'm like, oh yeah, that was yeah. you. Yeah. She had suppressed the trauma of yes. your Pretty uh, much. abandonment. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. And I think all of these stories about how you met me paint me in a very different light than who I actually am. Just being yeah. bubbly and outgoing and friendly yeah. and also being jacked up on caffeine because usually I'm just well, very low-key. Yeah. 
You do Whatever. like your caffeine. It was very funny. I can't do it. It doesn't like me. Well, it Not, was, it was the, amazing. The best part about that was that was from coffee from the day before. Yeah. It wasn't like <laughs> coffee she had like right before that interview. No, no I didn't sleep because I had cold brew oh, at no. noon and thought that would be a good that idea the be day fun. before an interview. So it was amazing. No. But yes, it was 100% accurate. <laughs> I'll never forget. I was sitting there and I'm like, she's it. We yeah. got to have her. <laughs> yes. She's. She's one of us. Yeah. (laughs) But Kyle, you have to tell us because I think this is a little bit more um, interesting. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm really bad at these because I don't I don't quite remember. I don't know if this was the actual first time we met, Mm -hmm. but so when I worked in Mm -hmm. Jackie's office in 2020, I worked worked there for a little bit. Claire was actually the one who like trained me. Yes. Um, to like do do the intakes and what the process was. And so yes. I would literally just kind of sit on the phone with her <laughs> while she did a couple intakes. But I think we all met. I think we all had a little meeting together. Probably. Um, and we probably just chit chatted. But then I remember, I think you got Jackie got off the call and you and I just kind of chatted and I asked you questions. And I remember <laughs> I would be like, what? Claire's like, like, she is bonkers. <laughs> I would be like, what, like, what do you do when this happens? You'd be like, well, here's what I do, but that's really not what you're supposed to do. So you can do it, but if you get in trouble, it's on you, it's on you. So just to let you know, but that's what I do. And then when you first did an intake, I was like, I'm, I can't do this. Like, she's amazing. There's no way I can follow that. Oh my gosh. I don't remember that at all. I don't remember what it was. And then I remember the first intake I did that you listened I totally messed up and you were so nice and said I didn't, but I had to call him back to ask him questions that I missed. And you were kind of like, sorry, you got to do it. (laughs) (laughs) Because I was like, I don't want to. And you were like, well, it's, I'm sorry you got to for that one. I don't remember what it was, but. Oh my goodness. So, but I really, I was very impressed by you. I thought you were really funny. And I loved that you were just like, this is what I do. But, because I was still a newbie, right? Mm -hmm. I was still like, oh, I got to follow the rules. Mm -hmm. But you were like, eh. Mm Mm-hmm. Sometimes I do it. Sometimes I don't. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But that was the general idea of what was going on because we were developing a program. Right, literally. And then the pandemic happened. Yeah. So the the points didn't matter and everything was made up. literally. Yes, very much so. So that was not just me being flippantly irresponsible. No, no, no. It wasn't. (laughs) Not at all. It's not an irresponsibility. It's just like a... I do what I do, and I don't get in trouble. So yeah, and we get it done, and my people it, go where they need exact, to go, and that's that and that's exactly that what was, you said. That, that was, was it. that was my literal motto for yes. everyone. Yeah. It was it, right. Do what this, you do. You you do what you. Right. If it makes sense for you, you do it. But this is the end result. You got to get to that end point mm-hmm. exactly. And uh, mm-hmm. yes. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Kyle! I don't remember telling you that you had to call somebody back, but that sounds right. Yeah, yeah. I sound, don't remember. It sounds very clear. I can't remember what it was. It was some, but it was something like we couldn't just not have it i don't remember what mm-hmm. it was though but yeah i did that it could have been anything yeah could have been anything yeah. so is that is that accurate am i missing what do you No, that sounds that pretty sound accurate. accurate i mean i think overall it all blurred together because yeah. it was it was I, you know mm-hmm. video calling constantly and we, yeah it was busy so we didn't really have time to no. chit chat either no and you were like the 10th person i onboarded at that point yeah. yes so really. it was just like a revolving door of me being personable and educating and then watching and right. doing all the things. So yep. you weren't my first. So, you know. Oh, that was, yeah. That was, yeah. those were good times. Yeah. But I do remember the first time we met in person. Yes. That was fun. That big dinner outside. Yes. Yes. yes we did have a, we did have a gathering. I think that was the first time I met most of you. Yeah. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. That was an interesting. Uh, that was yeah. interesting. Though. Gathering. Mm-hmm. I think my favorite part was you going in and going to the bathroom <laughs> and meeting my dad. <laughs> And, <laughs> oh, gosh. and they were like watching like a football game yeah. or something and they were like don't you like the i don't know whatever uh, buccaneers sports ball and i was like no not really and then I, left. <laughs> I was like i need to go talk to the girls now <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh yeah uh, that was well, fun that was not a that was not a uh, pandemic friendly no, gathering no 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 which well, some, it was outside it well was, it was, it was okay so it was yeah it was okay. outside although i will say now i'm really surprised I'm, I'm not surprised but i'm glad that nothing no outbreaks happened at mm-hmm. that event because mm-hmm. that would have been really mm-hmm. rough because mm-hmm. literally everybody from our team was there yeah. mm-hmm. everyone mm-hmm. yeah absolutely <laughs> and it was so, magical yeah. yes yes well so we want to get to know claire a little bit more as well 
Um, so we're going to do a little lightning round for Claire. Ooh. So I just have some just little random questions. They're simple. you got to just first answer that comes to your head. Don't think about it. Don't put a lot of thought into it. Okay? Yes. <laughs> They're not bad. They're not bad. They're not bad. So first one, favorite junk food? Ooh. Um, mm, there's not a big junk food. I'm here. not. I know. That's one. That's hard for me. Oh, okay. So I think if I, it's in front of me. Probably like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't do a whole lot of or like a snack, check. like a snacky. Yeah. Check my favorite snacky. Check yeah. Oh, dude, yeah, I do make some good home home check snacks. Home okay. <laughs> no, you know what it is? Pringles. Pringles. Well. Oh, okay. Once you pop, the fun don't stop. Exactly. I say. can eat an entire tube of those if I open those. So Pringles. Mm. Pringles. Um, have you ever slapped someone in the face? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, funny me. story, but we can get that another time. <laughs> Yeah, these we can't we can't question Claire on these. It's just lightning round. Um, black beans or refried beans in your burrito? Black. Correct. Wait, um, those are correct. <laughs> giving giving a present or getting a present? I would rather give a present. On um, brand. Um, say a word in Spanish. Hola. <laughs> <laughs> you thought she was gonna say like biblioteca or something like <laughs> uh, biblioteca. <laughs> I panicked. Um, is Jimmy Kimmel funny? Not my favorite late night, but. I'll deal with it. Um, and then last one, if Kim Kardashian and Donald Trump were both drowning and you could only save one, who would it be? <laughs> what a question. Do I have to answer this question? Yes. Yeah, of course you do. Oh, gosh. Then I guess it has to be Kim Kardashian. Okay. It's a hard one. I know. that was. I didn't make that up. Google. I Googled that one. <laughs> um, so something else to get to know Claire. I had Claire prepare a little playlist. <gasps> That tells us all about Claire in five songs. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to list them and then you just give like a quick little like one sentence like why. Mm -hmm. Why is that Mm -hmm. song about you? Mm -hmm. Um, And Jack and I literally don't know any of these songs except one. Yes, that we did establish that earlier. So I don't know if our listeners will. (laughs) The first one, uh, My Own Worst Enemy by Lit. Yeah, that is a song that no matter when it is on, I probably listen to it five times in a row, screaming as loud as possible, and yeah, just okay. go I'm all out. I have to listen to some of these too. Oh, it's good. Uh, the second one, "Bitch" by Meredith Brooks. Mm-hmm. Great song. Mm-hmm. Oh, you do know that? Song. Yes, I do. Know oh, that you one. do. Know I know. That one. I know, I know okay. two of them. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. So why? What about that one? Um, it is very you? dynamic, dynamic, and uh-huh. yeah, it just has a lot going on to it. I actually wrote a paper in. I don't know, high school to try to get like a um, scholarship. And that was the song that I chose. Oh. There is some embarrassment that came with that, but that's fine. <laughs> See, I still feel like that's on brand for you. I don't I know. know why. So I, like, as an 18 year old, everyone else is picking right. like, you know, whatever. Yeah. And I pick bitch by <laughs> Meredith Brooks. They're picking like, I believe I can fly. Yeah, and, pretty much. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? You don't know what you're going to get with yeah. me. And whatever like a catchy true. pop tune was yeah. on right. at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Hit me no. baby one yeah. more time. Yeah, no. <laughs> Uh, the third one, Just a Ride by Jim. Yeah. I think that's, you know, one of the more... So I was obsessed with all the music from the OC, and that's a song that stuck oh. out from there. Oh, okay. And I didn't watch the OC. Like that, that basically shaped all of my yes. musicness was the OC, and that was a song that was on there. But it's just very positive. It just talks about life being kind of like a ride, ups and downs. You don't know what you're going to get, and you just got to keep going. Mm. Okay. Okay. All I hear in my head is the theme song from the OC. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Pretty much. Copyright. We can't say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the for, the sea is calling by Timber yeah. Trap. Yeah. If I could be anywhere, it's near a body of water. So, and that song's just very vibes, dreamy. They sing sweet disposition too. Mm. You know that song? No. No. Gosh, I need to learn, y'all. Nope. <laughs> Jeez. And the last one, Jagged Little Pill by Alanis Morissette, but really the entire album. Whole album. Yeah. Not all of it. Song. All of it. Yeah. She is vibes. Yeah. I love it all. It's good. Yeah. I'm here for it. Very good. It's very on brand. <laughs> At least that last one. I don't Thank know. I don't know almost all the other ones. <laughs> yeah. I don't know the other ones, but uh, we, listen to them we assume they yeah. probably Right. Are. Yeah. So, Claire... This is your episode. Mm-hmm. So we asked you to come and talk about a topic mm-hmm. of your choice, and you chose shame mm-hmm. and compassion. Mm-hmm. So why don't you take us into it? Yeah. What do you want to talk about with shame and compassion? Yeah. So like Kyle said in my bio, um, I have a background in yoga as well. Mm-hmm. So a lot of overlap with ACT being with more of like 
that cognitive behavioral side of things, but also with the heavy Eastern influence. Mm-hmm. So compassion showing up quite often. Um, so a lot of work um, with my clients. Mm-hmm. And I think shame is a thing in our culture that is pretty pervasive and you can call it out and see it very often. Oh, yeah. Lots mm-hmm. of things. So, I mean, it doesn't help with social media and everything. Like oh, we're, yeah. we're doing oh, everything no. wrong all the time. Um, so within ACT, um, you know, this is not going to be an ACT-based episode, but, you know, I notice in session with clients just the amount of fusion there is with I'm not good enough, mm-hmm. you know, everything like that. So trying to help clients work through shame and a lot of times that ends up being through self-compassion, compassion-type mm-hmm. work within a variety of other things as well. Why don't you tell us, because we've talked a little about ACT. We've kind of said mm-hmm. it because yeah. I do ACT, but why don't, we've never mm-hmm. really talked about mm-hmm. what it is. Mm-hmm. Give us a little, yeah. little tidbit of it. Yeah, so ACT, um, you say it as ACT because it's meant to be done as an, mm-hmm. action. an action. You do the thing, right? So it's acceptance and commitment therapy. And developed by Stephen Hayes in the 80s and just well-tested, well-read, very helpful for um, anxiety, um, addictions, Mm -hmm. just life stuff, health, um, even grief. I think everything but psychosis is the only thing that they say you can can still do some act with psychosis. You just like the the values and stuff and reality stuff. Yeah, it's very, very light though. Yeah. So, yeah, heavy focus on, um, so it has, like, six core processes. So, um, basically, everything has, like, a counterpart as far as more of, like, the, quote, unquote, like, negative side of things. Mm -hmm. Um, So, focusing on values, committed action, um, diffusion, acceptance, self as context, and I'm missing one. I can't think of it right now. It'll come to me eventually. Anyway, so what's nice about ACT is... It's not overly regimen, like not an overly routine. You know, you can make it as flexible as you need to. So meeting clients mm-hmm. where they're at, you know, mm-hmm. you can bounce around the different, the, you know, the hexaflex, as they yeah. call it, to meet clients where they're at. Um, so, mm-hmm. you know, if you want to focus on values work, you know, you don't always have to stick in with values work. You can bounce around and focus on, yep. um, you know, cognitive processes you can focus on just taking action you can focus on mindfulness um everything and anything in between so i like the flexibility of it Mm -hmm. um clients all the time i get feedback as you know like this just feels like real life it doesn't feel really like clinical it's just very relatable and yeah um yeah so i enjoy it for that aspect um and a lot of use of metaphors. So you'll find yes. that a lot. Yes. I use those constantly. My clients start saying them back to me all the time. <laughs> They'll be like, oh, Claire, I heard you in my brain this that's, week. Yep, and that's I go, when you know. That's, yep. I always tell mine, I'm like, that's yep. when you. That's when yep. I know I have you. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> usually <laughs> usually they come back and go, damn it, Claire. Yeah. That, that's mm-hmm. usually how I know. I I'm like, it. see, you're well, diffusing. Good job. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I love it in my um, line. In my line, you don't want to be in the clients. Uh, yeah, mind. yeah, you don't. So, no, no, no. no. Um, <laughs> can't um, relate. The, but the sixth process I was looking it up is being present. Oh shoot! Being present. Nailed it. We didn't do so well. Well, and so for that one, that's well, you got the that's, rest. You that's the cornerstone perfect. of act. If you're not present, you're not going to be able to hit all right. of those. Yeah. Right. So no it's wonder being with the feelings going. Hey, how are you feeling yeah. right now? Yeah. And so a lot of you know, like I think more so like when we're in. Um, you know, graduate school and learning about theory and things. Like, I think mm-hmm. I always gravitated, like, towards g- gestalt yeah, therapy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So very much focused on, like, whole being of clients, present moment awareness. You mm-hmm. know, definitely within ACT two, you look at the past, but it's more so focused on, okay, but what can we do about it right now? Right. Yes. So, right. you know, you're acknowledging, you know, different things. And so kind of bringing it back to shame, you know, you look at some past, you know, experiences of shame but it's not about gaining insight it's about how do we use this how do we validate the experiences that you've had Mm -hmm. and how shame was maybe useful in the past yes but now it might not be Mm -hmm. as effective we call those survival skills in my office yes Mm -hmm. yeah those are your survival skills that you don't need anymore no right you don't need them Mm -hmm. you know and if you could look at that person you know 
now. Like, Mm -hmm. my goodness, they had to do so much. Yeah. So those are helpful skills for the context that they were in in the past. They just aren't serving a purpose right now. Right. So I think with shame in particular, a lot of it, I mean, I think just being a therapist in general is just being able to hold space and validate that, Mm -hmm. you know, you're a human and you survived that Mm -hmm. or even just it's hard being a human. I mean, my my common line to people is how very human of you. Yeah. I mean, I say that. Oh, that's great. All the time. I love that. How very human of you. That's good. You can. Especially when people people are like, oh, gosh, I was I was frustrated with myself for this. And it's like, wow. Mm-hmm. You had a normal feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look at that. Pretty much. How very human of you. How very human of you. Oh, I'm, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm stealing that. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, this is why we keep Claire around. Yes. Mm-hmm. This is why we keep her around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. true. I would say clients never know what to expect from me, but at this point they come in and they're like, <laughs> okay, I know what you're going to say. And I go, oh, really? What am I going to say? And sometimes they're right and sometimes they're not. <laughs> we'll find out. Yeah. I used to do that in the prison too. I'd be, they'd be like, I know. I know what you're going to say. And mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, what is it? Yeah. yeah. Let me know. Yeah. yeah. Please tell me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's fun. So, um, but yeah, as far as shame and act goes, you know, you can approach it with any and all of the processes, mm-hmm. you know, so it's flexible. Like, you know, I have a lot of clients. I tend to be more body focused. I mean, yeah, obviously that's... the cognitions are going to show mm-hmm. up no matter what, but getting clients in touch with sensations in their body right. and just felt senses of things, that's a big part of the work that I tend to do. And some clients are just really body phobic yeah. and mm. can't yeah. do it. So I have to be willing to navigate that with them as far as, you know, building awareness of other things, especially a lot of my more body phobic, you know, type people are mm-hmm. focusing on values. Right. It's like, is yes. what you are doing, you know, getting you towards the life that you want to live? Yep. And if it's not, what are we going to do about it? Right. You know, and then eventually it's like, hey, here's this thing. Sometimes I call it mindfulness. Sometimes I don't because, again... It's woo woo, right? You know, whatever. Get that, get that meditation. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so, yeah, I tend to do a lot of values work. Yeah. With clients. Yep. Um, which I enjoy. I mean, it's like, why are we doing this? You know, or and it's helpful for calling out shame. It's like, okay, mm. you know, we all have it. Right. So, yeah. what purpose is it serving for mm-hmm. you? You know, and why does shame feel so heavy right now? Mm-hmm because these are all the things that matter to you you want to fit in you don't want people to be mad at you so shame's powerful in that Mm -hmm. you know in any of these like icky sticky kind of feelings they're not especially an act you know you wouldn't call them bad no they're not negative no no no. they're you know they're all telling us something they're all useful right maybe not in Mm -hmm. that moment no how do you yeah and I don't get to decide that. You know, if a client is having mm-hmm. an experience and it's like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm like, okay. Right. Moving on. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Whatever. So, yeah. And then I also call clients out too. Like if I can notice fusion and <laughs> right. things like that in session. <laughs> I mean, that's also very clear. A hundred percent. Like in session, right I can yeah. hear them just getting more and more fused, just like, yeah. just yeah. slowly, whatever. I'm like, thanks, mine. They go, damn it. Yeah. Every time they're like, I like when you do that because I I don't notice that I'm doing it. it. I go, I know you don't. That's that's, why I'm doing this. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm doing this. We, um, and for me, what we do, we, we name those things. Yep. And yeah, I have them name it. So if it's like, you know, they're Mm -hmm. blaming voice, which I think is very like internal family systems, Mm -hmm. which whatever. Um, (laughs) but it's, like I try to have them name it like like something so like Becky like oh yep. there's Becky there's Becky yep. telling you you're a piece of shit again yep tell Becky be quiet thank her mm-hmm. thanks Becky I mm-hmm. I know I need to do my best mm-hmm. I don't need to I don't need to be hard on myself mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so then you'll catch them they'll be going oh, Becky got me this week yeah I had a kid named mm-hmm. their mind um, well at first I thought he called it chinchilla but I think he told <laughs> me it was case it was quesadilla I was like all right Even, quesadilla was, here we go I was like tell me what's up how's quesadilla how's doing quesadilla? and I was like I love right, it whatever it was <laughs> yeah. fantastic so I love that yeah doing a lot of that yeah. or with some of my like grown-up clients you know it's like your mind's being a jerk tell mm-hmm. it it's being a jerk or saying your mind's kind of an asshole yep that's another one of my favorites mm-hmm like yeah yeah my mind's being an mind's asshole. Being asshole for mm-hmm. sure yeah i love cursing so it's fine oh yeah oh we know we talked about that i was in our fetch or flop not so long ago cursing and therapy mm. and it's a fetch it's a big fetch oh it's so a fetch. fetch it's a fetch so fetch mm-hmm. it's um, so fetch yeah. yeah 
I think the culture on that is changing because we talked about on the episode, like, you know, it was like, you always had to be professional with clients. Mm -hmm. Like you can't, you know, impose your own like Mm -hmm. thoughts and values and any, and then Mm -hmm. you should still shouldn't do that. But like Mm -hmm. cursing was a part of that. Mm -hmm. And I think that the culture around cursing and therapy is changing. I have no as in like more people scientific basis for anything Mm -hmm. that I'm saying right now. But I just think like, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's our, like, I hate to say it's our generation, but Mm -hmm. like, well, I no, I think, I think you're, I mean, we're all just barely freshly out of high school, but I mean, it's true. It's true. true. Mm -hmm. Um, I just think, cause I, I mean, that's what I was also taught in school and I'm sure you both were taught the same thing. It was don't, you can't curse. Like Mm -hmm. that's not professional, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then you go in certain contexts and right. Mm -hmm. That's something that you do. So Mm -hmm. yeah, Yeah. it's a big fetch for me. Cursing and therapy. Big old fetch. You know, it's a yes and. Yeah. You yes know, yeah. As you don't far come as, out the gate with it. No, I, I definitely yeah. wait and see kind of how my For clients sure. respond to that. And some of mm-hmm. them even don't like, you know, necessarily sometimes I'm the one cursing more and that's fine. But they appreciate <laughs> it. They, like, they relate to it like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But they, they're still keeping up their front again, coming back to that shame element mm-hmm. of I need to, you know, show my therapist that I'm not like a total mm. piece of shit. And right. I'm like, Let the guard down. Right. Clearly, I am human too. Right. Right. One, I can see through it. Two. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. Absolutely. So, again, yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think that's the element too of even just self disclosure in therapy. Yeah. I'm. I'm pretty like. I mean, I guess that maybe is more psychodynamic of me, like kind of keeping myself at a distance. Like it's not about me, and sometimes I'm very rigid as far as that goes. But being a person in the room, right? People don't necessarily know me or my life, but. I show up as I show up. Right. I will call out whatever, like, I'm like, yo. Especially some of my clients that are more perceptive to kind of my mood shifts. Mm-hmm. Mm. And it's like, hey, what are we noticing right now? Because I can tell that you are starting to shut down and I know I came into the room like this. So what effect is that having on you? Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. more of that kind of self-disclosure mm-hmm. is real helpful. Yeah. Because some clients would be like, man, I really thought you were mad at me. And I'm like, mm. no, let's talk about that. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. So where do you think, for you, where does all this shame come from? Oh, my God. Is that a personal question? Yeah. <laughs> where does all your shame come from, Claire? Tell us about well, it. Well, <laughs> tell us all your Tell us all your well. personal shame. <laughs> so I've had this conversation with clients, too, you know, more as, like, psychoed. You know, I think clients come to therapy for lots of different reasons, and I think a lot of people want to know why. And mm-hmm. I think that is hard when it comes to matters of feelings and the past mm-hmm. because we're not very accurate in how we tell our experiences right. from the past, you know. So yeah, yeah. Retweet. Right? I'm yeah, sorry. Right? Retweet. Hundred wow. percent. Jackie's feeling the spirit currently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always. So I think a lot of it does stem from childhood, you know, yeah. every and all of that, just the, how you, we're relational. And I've heard you talk about that on the pod before too, mm-hmm. you know, and those stories, yeah. you know, not to be said lately, those stories start pretty young. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. learn very quickly what people like and what other people don't like and what we need to do in order to get our needs met. And I think shame very much comes out of that woodwork and it looks different for everybody Mm -hmm. and even if you had a very similar experience Mm -hmm. it it doesn't matter like one thing that could feel really like shame inducing to me you might be like what right yeah yeah what yeah it's like it's learned yeah for sure shame is learned painful past learning yeah so yeah i think i don't think there's an easy answer for that one i think that's a variety anything pretty much yeah do you think is a lot of it trauma based or can it does it not necessarily have to be trauma? Well, what do we know about trauma? As far as, that's all just your own interpretation and just your body's inability to handle mm-hmm. a big stressor. So sure. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> next next question. Yeah. The next, please. <laughs> maybe we should take a break. Yeah. Let's take a little break and then maybe we can uh, uh, pick Claire's brain on what do we do with this shame? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What are we going to do about it? Mm-hmm. We'll be right back. And we're back. 
we are back to the Claire podcast. Yeah, we've it's, it's not too tired <laughs> therapist. It's Claire's podcast. It's Claire's now. podcast. <laughs> who brings us truly educational information? Right. Mm-hmm. You and I are just we have ex- you. Our poor <laughs> listeners have experienced nothing like this before. No, they're probably like we've had to put up with these two bitches. For Correct two, for all this time. Correct. Now we're getting real information. I know. Oh, goodness, canceled. Very. We brand. are canceled. Someone's gonna leave a review and be like, "Where's Claire? Where's Claire? Bring her back. <laughs> just give her the podcast. Just let her take over." <laughs> First timer over here. I have no idea what I'm doing. No, you're doing you're great. Amazing. You're doing amazing, sweetie. So take us through. I know you have some. <laughs> you have some maybe exercises prepared for us, yeah. or, or some some discussion questions for yeah. us. So um, yeah, take so it you, away. Sure. So you kind of left it off talking about how to handle shame, yeah. what to do about it. Mm-hmm. So before we get into some the specifics about that, you know the. I guess running tagline of shame is you got to name it to tame it. Uh oh. So oh. <laughs> this is a I'm scared. this is a uh, my family's favorite at big events, birthday parties. Everyone goes around. Does not matter the size of the room. Oh my! You have to tell your most embarrassing story. Oh. Mm-hmm. There's so many to choose from. I know. I don't know which one to choose. Just like recent or just like most Whatever you ever want. No, it doesn't matter. Whatever comes to mind, your most embarrassing story. Kyle, okay. you're, you're going first. I have one. I have to gauge which embarrassing story do I tell. Um, <laughs> Off yours. So I was, I was probably a teenager. I mean, it's not that, I guess it's, at the time I was embarrassed. At, looking back, now I'm not. But at the time I was mortified. So I was really, really sick one day. Like I had like flu, like throwing up, like diarrhea, at like both ends. Um, But when it started, like in the morning, I'd woken up and I was like, oh, I think I'm going to throw up. So I like tried to go to the bathroom. Well, at my parents' house, my bedroom is literally upstairs, completely the furthest away from the bathroom. Uh Uh-oh. So didn't make it and threw up in the trash can. But little, you know, well, something, something happened in the back. (laughs) i was mortified i had to have been like 15 16 Mm -hmm. and so i threw my underwear away like because it wasn't bad it was just like a little and i threw it away and i my mom was cleaning and she got trash and she's like i tried to bury them (laughs) and my mom found them and so she came and she was like why are your underwear in the trash? And I was like, I uh, because I was sick and I pooped in them a little bit and I didn't want you to have to see them. <laughs> like, I'm, again, 16-year-old crying. And she was like, I was mortified that she found them. And she was like, I'm your mother. I have changed your shitty diapers and done all kinds of things for you. Um, so, but I just remember being like, God, I pooped my pants as a 15-year-old, like that kind of thing. Oh, my goodness. That's what comes to mind. I don't know. I'm mm-hmm. sure I have something worse than that. Mm-hmm. But. So that's yeah. where I went. A shit mm-hmm. story. Did you mm-hmm. think that's where it was going? Yeah, I yeah. figured. Mm-hmm. I Well, and I couldn't I couldn't really think. I Mine's similar, but not the same. But, like, I, I don't remember how old I was. I was probably, like, 12 or 13. And I was um, coming home on the bus, and uh, I was, like, a latchkey kid. So, like, my mom wasn't home. I know, very old-timey <laughs> phrase I'm using. But, um, but you are also born in the 1800s. Right. What's going on? <laughs> no, I was just born, like, 10 years ago, Kyle. I'm so young. That's right. Um, so, yeah, I was coming home uh, from school, and I had to go – I really had to go to the bathroom before I got on the bus home. But I was like, no, I can hold it, whatever. And so I, my friend and I, she lived like down the block from me. We were like talking on the bus stop and I was like thinking to myself, I'm like, man, I got to go pee so bad, so bad. But I didn't want to like stop talking to her. And so finally when we stopped talking, I was like, I'm going to pee my pants. I probably walked to my house like cross-legged. I get to the back door and I'm like, no joke, putting the key in the last lock and I pissed myself. Oh, I was like 13. I was so like you mortified. And no one saw me. My mom wasn't home. I don't think my brother was home at the time either. And I remember, like, I didn't know how to do laundry at that point, like, necessarily. I, like, didn't know what to do. I, like, threw my jeans at the bottom of the, like, washer so, like, my mom wouldn't see. I don't even know. She Maybe she did. Uh, but I was, like, more – I was, like, how did I just pee mm-hmm. my pants? Mm-hmm. Like, there was no warning. It wasn't, like – I. it just literally pissed myself. It was yeah. – no one saw me, but I – for years, I – I think this might be the first time I'm ever actually telling this story to exactly. other people Welcome. because I just was like, oh my God, yeah. I'm so embarrassed. I was like, I, mm-hmm. 
I'm going to wet the bed. I don't know. I was like, mm-hmm. yeah. What's going to happen to me now? Just mm-hmm. I'm just going to piss my past whenever. I don't every know. Day. It's mm-hmm. never happened since, but. Thank God. Mm-hmm. So, but exactly like you're saying, these are the things that live rent free in yeah. your brain. Yeah. Even Late as at night, I'm laying down. I'm like, sure. I yeah. beat myself yeah, when I was do. 13. You yeah. go over it. And yeah, like, you think about it. Mm-hmm. And like with mine, it's like, my mom didn't care. She, mm-hmm. she, yeah, no, mm-hmm. one, no, no one, one saw cared. mine. No one cared. Mm-mm. But you knew exactly what that felt like. Yeah. Like right now, even yeah. years later. Yeah. yeah, it's like, it's ooh, just, ooh, yeah. cringe. It's, it's ick, the ick. Right? Yeah. The mm-hmm. ick, that's what the kids say, the ick. Yeah. Just the stomach, yeah. the don't look at me. Yeah. I'm a piece yeah. of crap. Yep. All that. Mm-hmm. For sure. Mm-hmm. So name and entertainment, like you said, I never said that out loud before. Yeah. Right? But even now you're like, who cares? Exactly. It's kind of a funny story. Yeah. It, right, now, right. It is. now it is. <laughs> now it is. Now it is. Yeah. Right. Well, and even you guys had a filter, yeah. right? As far as I'm sure there's some other stuff that's like real deep, shameful stuff, and we don't need to get into that today. But you know what I mean? Like there's yeah. tons of things. Probably. So it's just one I'm example sure. of many of things that live rent free in your brain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I find that in therapy all the time. People come in like, I've never said that out loud before. Why was I so scared to say that out loud? Mm-hmm. Like, what is that about? You know, talking through some of that, but then also people come back the following week. They're like, I haven't thought about that thing mm-hmm. at all. Yeah. It's just gone. Yeah. I I don't feel any type of way about it anymore. Yeah. I mean, so just that element of being able to say things out loud to another person who yeah. respects you and can listen to mm-hmm. you and just mm-hmm. validate that you're a human and we all have mm-hmm. experiences like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now you've told the world. We all shit our pants. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. You know, everybody it all comes pants. it all comes back to the bathroom. Because even mine's about I the know. bathroom. I well, know. Really? That's literally what I thought. That's literally, I'm like, I'm like, there's a theme here. It's like yeah. bathroom and like why. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a lot of shame about like for yeah. some, like pooping and stuff. Yeah. You do oh, it, for sure. You do it in private. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, you didn't talk about it. Mm-hmm. I mean. Mm-hmm. There's plenty of things yeah. we don't talk about. Yeah, we didn't even get tabby. into Catholic guilt, girl. Oh, oh, oh boo. That's a, that's a we don't got to talk about that today. That's a whole other one. That's a whole we don't other have another episode. We don't have enough time for no. that Catholic guilt. I actually just referenced Catholic guilt on the phone with my mom not oh, that really? long ago. And she was like, that's not Catholic guilt. And I'm like, that is Catholic <laughs> guilt. Right. I can't, I, I don't even, I haven't been to church in a long time, but mm-hmm. I'm still like, I feel really guilty. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I feel real guilty. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. The Holy oh. Spirit is telling me I should feel guilty about this. Yep. I was raised Methodist, so we don't have any guilt. We don't have anything. So. I love that for you. Yeah, you yeah. do too. You don't, for you. You, you don't, yeah. It's the worst. <laughs> I don't give a shit about anything. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> yeah, accurate. Anyway. So, so what do you do with the shame? Or yeah. do you have more questions? Sorry. Yeah, no. No, those are it. But, I mean, that's one element. Just being able it. to name it, you know, either to yourself or to somebody else. Mm-hmm. Being able to talk about it out loud, mm-hmm. you know, reduces yeah. some of that, like, the ick. Yeah. As you ick, were saying. The ick. Um, other things that I personally like and, you know, reiterate to clients too is doing and saying what I'm going to say I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you make a commitment to yourself or to somebody following through, yeah. you know, and again, tying that in with values, you know, building yes. up that confidence in yourself of, you know, I am an autonomous person. And even if I have all of these different feelings and experiences, I'm still a full person, mm-hmm. you know, and that's what it, acceptance and commitment therapy is about mm-hmm. acceptance isn't just you know tolerate it and push through right. it's expanding right. you know it's taking it all in as being part of a human right um and you don't have to like it that's no. what i tell people no and i say that all the time to clients say, i don't i don't like that i feel this way that's okay, okay. that's fine yeah but we have to just accept that's yeah. where you are though and i think that's another element mm-hmm. about compassion that throws people off especially clients who are like dealing with shame for a very long time and stuffing it way down trying to go so far the other way mm-hmm. of just be positive yeah and, you know oh, no, do no, no. you you can't mm-hmm. do that you have to nope. kind of chip away at it so like you're saying you know as um you know an experience that doesn't feel great acknowledging i don't like the way that this feels and i can still continue and, to live yeah. my life and do something else i love the and i try to mm-hmm. that's something personal that i been trying to do lately is and mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. it's very dbt of you. it is it is thank and you i am doing dbt training so it's, that's it's oh, very, very DBT. nice <laughs> well i talk about willingness and like mm-hmm. i don't talk about radical acceptance with clients but yeah uh, like the willingness yeah. to do things that's another element right. that fits in nicely yeah. here too it's like even though i feel this i mean that's a big i, I do a lot of tapping so like eft oh, okay. yeah same idea i mean their whole setup statement is based in compassion it's even though I feel 
ashamed, scared, anxious, worried, hopeless, I still love and fully accept myself. Mm -hmm. That's a major setup phrase mm -hmm. that's commonly used, very based in compassion. Yep. And you're just, you're tapping, you know, which is again, getting more oriented into the body mm -hmm. while also doing a reframe. So those are big ones. Yeah. That too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I think a lot of people don't understand about therapy is like, we're, we're not just like making you happy. Mm -mm. We're helping you figure out how do you feel all the feels. Mm -hmm. And I always say it's like, you know, you, most people who come to therapy have spent so much time and energy and resources trying to hold back their feelings and that's like holding back the tide mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you're wasting your time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you spent all this time building mm -hmm. a sandcastle wall mm -hmm. the tide's going to come in it doesn't care mm -hmm. right. but now when that water rushes over you you're exhausted because you mm -hmm. built that wall mm -hmm. and instead it's more of how do i prepare for this to come in deal with it and understand that the tide's going to go out yeah and it'll be okay. Yeah. And when it goes out, I know it'll come back mm -hmm. and I'll be ready for it. Mm -hmm. So it's like putting your emotional resources towards that rather mm -hmm. than trying to like fight it because mm -hmm. you can't, you can't do that. Yeah. I mean, within act two, they, you know, people talk about the matrix, but they also talk about the choice mm -hmm. point. So I say all the time, there's effort either way, you know, like you're right. saying, building that wall up, keeping everything contained and, you know, like controlled, right. which is a lie. Yeah. Or just letting the feeling happen. Yeah. You know, there's going to be effort and discomfort either way. Right. What's going to be most in alignment with right. what matters to you and getting you towards the life that you want. Exactly. So. Yeah. Yeah. Those are big That's things. That's why when I, I usually start with like the values-based self-care, mm -hmm. that's always where I start. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people my little equation is I value X mm -hmm. and commit to it through mm -hmm. Y. Mm -hmm. Because then that way it helps you to say, okay, I value my family and then using the word commit helps you to determine if that next thing really is, mm -hmm. do you want to commit to that? Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't want to. Well, then don't pick that. Let's pick something else. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, and it's going to be different. We could all, we were talking about this earlier, we could all say we value family, but looks very different. it's going to look very different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can't say, oh, Claire, mm -hmm. you need to do this because mm -hmm. that may not work. Mm -hmm. So we have those different com commitments mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. actions. Mm -hmm. I think that throw cl throws clients sometimes. Yeah. Just tell me what to do. Yeah. It's no. like, no, 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 we no, don't no, do no. that here. We don't do that no, here. No, because mm -hmm. if it, you don't have buy in and it doesn't make sense right. for you, there's no point. I was in a training not too long ago and, you know, their whole thing was what's the, what's the right way to do. I think it was just like a self regulation or something. Mm -hmm. It's like, Whatever, whatever way, whatever way works yeah, for you. Works. That's the only way to do it. Mm -hmm. I, I, try to live, I, I try to live my life that way. Sure. It's, it's really, it's it's really it's tough. Hard. It's it's hard because mm -hmm. you get used to. It's like you know, when somebody leaves a job, it's like, oh, I'm you know, I'm ha you know, I'm happy but... for you, but I'm sad. Yeah. Whereas I always try to be like, I'm happy for you, and I'm sad for mm -hmm. us, like yeah. because it just mm -hmm. seems a little bit more like because mm -hmm. it's yeah. that very mm -hmm. dialectical piece of like mm -hmm. it, you can be two different things at once, and it seems silly to like like say that, but. It, it really does make a difference. Mm -hmm. it oh, really it does. does. It really does. That was like the number one thing we did in the prison with the offenders is like stop saying but and start saying and. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like. Yeah. I think I've been cheating lately because I'll say like yet or. Yeah. Even though like I'm starting to use those words and I'm like, are you cheating? What are you doing? Are you allowed to use those words? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Oh. Work in progress. Mm -hmm. I'm not perfect. Everybody is. People mm -hmm. think I am and I get it. I, that's the number I one comment it. we get that's about this podcast is, is, is Kyle is perfect. But I'm not. Hmm. Believe it or not. <laughs> not my comment, but it's fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no comment. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> and uh, Claire's almost done now. I'm just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 uh, and you're not great. coming back. Um, wow, great. Um, what a, is there anything else you've prepared for us about shame, compassion? What else should we know about it? I would say nothing in particular, but more so just other elements of compassion i think there's so mm -hmm. many different not theories what am i thinking of just umbrellas and mm -hmm. how people describe and go about um mm -hmm. shame and compassion but yeah there's lots of different ways to approach it so mm -hmm. everybody kind of has to find their way yeah and i i find in therapy that i'm doing different things all the time i mean so those are just a few of the things that i find to do yeah. but there's so many more do you have a, a just a personal favorite of yours that you you like to do, for clients or for myself? For yourself, 
She's like, I don't do this shit. Yeah, she's like, I teach other people to do yeah, this shit. Yeah, wait, no, I'm in therapy for <laughs> other people, not for me. Well, I think the big thing is humor. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. honestly, yeah. you know, being able to laugh at myself and being mm-hmm. able to say it out loud. And I, I, you know, that was kind of a weird space to have to reorient to that. I remember being in like grad school yeah. and it's like, oh, yeah. they're, if not you, if it. they're not, you know, no. it's like, there's a defense mechanism. And I was like, get girl, get out of here. Get out of here. Go so by. being able to incorporate it in a way that is values based That's, and yeah. orienting to it's okay to laugh at myself. I am human. I am real. I'm not a robot. Um, so I tend to use humor mm-hmm. quite a bit. But yes, again, it's I also do. it's also relational. Right. You know, if you can and you know, take all of that and put it into something humorous, people know where you're coming from. Right. You know, and, and you have to have that relationship. For with sure. Them. You can't do like in the first session necessarily. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And nice. I think it has to work with your personality. Like mm-hmm. we, th- we three mm-hmm. are three peas in a pod mm-hmm. and <laughs> right. can do that. Like there are mm-hmm. people though that, and you no, know, no Tino shade to them, but mm-hmm. like it's, it's just not, that's not for them. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I always say. Sometimes it's just easier to laugh. Oh. Like, I mean, truly, I said it to a lot of people. I'm like, mm-hmm. sometimes all you can do is yeah. just yeah. laugh. Just to get through. Sometimes. I think, and mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, it helps. Yeah. No, my family mantra is, if I don't laugh, I'll cry, which I don't I totally agree with. But, you know, again, <laughs> trying to reorient the family right. to, I am a therapist. You right. telling me all of these things uh, is not helping your case. No. So. <laughs> no. Oh, no. But, no, definitely. I yeah. mean, it's like a, I don't need to wallow forever. Right. That's I tell people. I say we can have a pity party, mm-hmm. but it ends yeah. at the end of the day. Yep. Everybody goes home. Yeah. We can touch it. We can feel Party's it, but over. we're not going to mm-hmm. stay here. Yeah. Party get party over. Party's over. Yeah. All the time. Passion. Absolutely. Shame and compassion. Mm-hmm. All then wrapped up into a neat yep. little bow. Neat little bow. Back mm-hmm. there. Claire Bear. Mm-hmm. Our dear friend Claire. Our little Claire Bear. Mm-hmm. So, I always called you Claire. I know. I I her well, name. It it gave my email address. It, out was, on this. it was her aim. Uh, her it was aim, AIM screen name. Who says it's not anymore? You still use aim? I would no. love to still oh, use aim. Are I would you die. Me? I would I would, do I would be deceased. You'd have to bury me in your backyard if she said we that. We would have to catfish someone. I I will say most of the things were true though. You are you are a therapist. You are yes. a fellow Aries. Mm-hmm. You are a fellow yogi and vegetarian. Mm-hmm. You are all those things. Mm-hmm. You had some very kind words. Thank you. Yeah, you're very nice to me. Appreciate it. Only to Claire. Only, no, literally nobody else. <laughs> no. And Not Groot. To me. Groot and Claire. Yeah. 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 Great. So, so Claire, you know we always do our fetch or flop. Mm-hmm. Well, not always. It's it's relatively new, but um, so we did a little a special edition <laughs> for Claire. We yes. did the and it's it's for me too because yes, it's it a is. vegetarian edition. Yes. So fetch or flop. Yes. Fetch is you love it. We we want that flop. We don't do it, and fine is yeah. it's in the middle. We can take it or leave it. All right, okay. So we'll, we'll all do it too. Yes, even though it's vegetarian. So the first one is the um, jackfruit meat alternative. Fetch. Oh, I would say flop. Okay, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of the jackfruit. Have I, you have you I, imbibed? I would also say flop. I've had it one time. Did not did not like. Did not like. Um. The Beyond Meat alternative. Mm, is that Beyond or Impossible? Or is it Impossible? Either one. Im- one of them does not agree with me, so I'm going to go flop because I can't remember which one it is. Okay. I think the Beyond one is the one you can buy at Target. Okay. I've never had it before. Had it. No. I've wanted, I do want to try it, though. I think, well, now, now Claire has me second guessing, but I think Beyond is the one I like, so I think Fetch. You, talk, you know what I'm talking about, though? The I one do, of them? yeah. Okay. So, so yes. maybe I am the same category as you. There's one I'm like, mm-mm, can't do it. Yeah, there is one that I, doesn't agree with me either. Hmm. What's in that one? I don't know. One of them is made... It might be the impossible. One of it's made with, like, this weird... It's not... One of them's whey, I think, and the other one oh, is... Oh, that might be part of it. It's something, like, to make it mimic a yeah, burger. And, I can't remember what it know. is, though. But it, yeah. Uh, the third one, chickpeas. Oh, total fetch. I gotta say fetch. Big well. fetch. Big fetch. Big fetch. Next one, lettuce wrapped everything. Mm, nah, flop. Flop. Yeah, I have to say flop too. And then last one, telling people that you are a vegetarian within the first five minutes of meeting them. <laughs> <laughs> flop. <laughs> flop. Flop. 
I don't think I do that. No. No. I don't think I do. No, neither of you do that. Um, no. I think you only learned based on my meals. When there, yeah, I was going to say. Cardboard I, soup. Right. Yeah. Coming. Well, that wasn't just me. I don't want to make it seem like I'm a, I'm a workplace well, violence bully. Well, but, um, I don't know. I don't know. I, no, it was I d- funny. I didn't, we didn't, I, well, I didn't know that you were a vegetarian until, yeah, we, you would like go to heat up lunch and you have all these soups and we're like, what's in them? And it wasn't just me. It was more than one of us. I won't name the other person. I'm sure she listens to this podcast. Oh, I think you should. Oh, I think we know who it is. Oh, it's EK. Oh, okay. Perfect. Um, <laughs> she still is like, remember cardboard soup? I'm yeah. Like, yeah, I still make it. It's delicious. Well, and then I knocked tofu at the time. You were like, oh, it's tofu. And I'm like, that's disgusting. And then producer Justin made ramen one night. Oh. You did not get to have it, Claire, unfortunately. Claire, you missed out. And the tofu out. was so legit. And I've like, been wanting to oh have it God. ever since it we had like, it again. So it was I'm, like wow. eating a cheese curd. It tastes what? like a cheese curd. It was curd. so good. It was, well, was so it good. like, was it actually paneer or was it tofu? It was tofu. Okay. It was good. I don't know, but I ate the shit out of it. Yeah. I dream of it. Still. I'm so jealous. It was so good. Way and better than cardboard soup. It was. It was so. Yeah. We would. Like, Claire, what are you I eating? think people only find out when we like go out to eat. Yeah. Because I'll say something of like, oh, I just have to, just to check the menu. They'll be like, why? I'm like, why don't you? Mm-hmm. But I don't like freak out. I'm like, it's fine as long as I have like French fries. I'm, that's I'll yeah. literally just eat French fries. Mm-hmm. I'm fine. No, both of you are very good about. Uh, not talking about it as soon as you meet somebody and also not shaming some of us who do who are not vegetarian not mm-hmm. no 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 mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. there are people mm-hmm. there we go well claire well, we are mm-hmm. so glad you were here i know we will definitely have you back for maybe another topic or right on we'll see maybe claire will be the only guest well all right well that's it's it been great that's it for this we'll see you next time Bye. stay tired <laughs>